genetic state of an organism is how many sets of chromosomes does the organism have and how are these uh, sets of chromosomes arranged, so to speak. So when we look at this, we're going to look at a couple of different terms and we're going to try and give you an example of how they all fit together. Now, in genetic states, when we talk about chromosomes, we talk about chromosomes normally coming in pairs. So you get one pair from the mother, you get one pair from the father. We often talk about homologous chromosomes, which means we're talking about the chromosomes that have the same genes on them. So if you get a chromosome from your mother that has a set of genes for eye color, you get a chromosome from your father that has a set of genes for eye color, That those are homologous chromosomes. So we have to understand the, the concept of the homologous chromosome. And in that case, you're looking at a pair of them. When we do when we deal with these, you know, we often put them together and, you know, we can colorize them. And you can see they're basically identical. You got, they're, they're different because you got one from one, one from one parent, one from the other parent, but they are essentially the same. And we would call these homologous chromosomes. Uh, sometimes we break them off depending on whether or not they look short or they look tall. But here you can see we have got two pairs of chromosomes. So, that's what we're dealing with as far as chromosomes go. When we deal with the term haploid, we are looking at a single set of homologous type chromosomes. We represent this basically by the letter N, that's a lowercase n, and that means that you got that set from your mother. Your mother only gives her, only gives you half of the chromosome she has, but she gives you one copy of each, the father gives you one copy of each, and therefore these are what we call reproductive chromosomes. They are passed on through the gametes, the gametes being either the egg cell, in the case of the female, the pollen in the case of a plant, or the sperm in the case of a animal. So therefore, these would be a reproductive set, and we're talking about haploid. So here you've got one set of chromosomes. You know, this could have come from the uh, from one parent. Here you've got a different set. This came from the other parent. Or you could have had this set come together from the parent, or that set come together from the parent. So you, you've got a, a lot of different possibilities. You know, you've got one tall and one short on each one, and that's what you get from the parents. When we look at diploid, we are talking about pairs of homologous chromosomes. Therefore, we represent them as 2N. So when we look at this, we see a set of chromosomes, 2N equals 4, because we've got four chromosomes, but we've got two pairs of reddish types and bluish types, you know, long and short. And this is what you would find in the normal vegetative type cell. Now, we also get a very special kind in here in fungi, and this is called dikaryotic. And what this really comes down to is it comes down to a pair of haploid chromosomes. Now, let's think about this. When you started out in life, you started out as an egg cell that became fertilized by a sperm cell. The two of them came together. The two nuclei of those gametes fused and all of the chromosomes intermixed and we started out with something that was basically what we call diploid. When a fungus reproduces, it starts out as two little filaments. They come together, they fuse. At the point they fuse, you now have a cell that's going to have a nucleus from the mother and a nucleus from the father, if we want to call them that. And these two nuclei stay apart during the life cycle, during majority of the life cycle. Therefore, what we have is we have a pair of haploid nuclei doing all of this stuff as the cell does everything that it does, but they don't fuse until the time of sexual reproduction. And they can spend a lot of time in this dikaryotic state. So we call this a dikaryon, and we represent it as two individual nuclei. So you can see over here, each one of the nuclei has a long and a short, 
but they're separated. They're inside of their own nuclei, and therefore they're a little bit different. So when we look at genetic state, we're talking about is the organism haploid, as in bacteria, or in eukaryotic reproductive cells? Is the organism diploid, as you would find in most cells? Or is the organism dikaryotic, which you find in many fungi?